All right, welcome back. Hopefully you got a cup of coffee or something. You're ready to go? You're ready to learn MD Framework Core updating this time. Last couple of videos, we talked about how to uh, read from a database, how to use where clauses, how to display the, da the data in our demo ASP.NET web app. Uh, what else have we done? And add, add data. We have a form and we use MD Framework to take data from the form that the user types in, right? And adds different data and sends it to the database super simply. And in the very first video, we talked about how do we use any framework to set everything up, build our database, uh, if it doesn't already exist, which it didn't. And yeah, if you haven't been following along, go check out the previous couple videos. And if you like this stuff, don't forget to hit subscribe. Uh, basically what this channel is, is as I learn different things in programming, I like to share them with you guys and hopefully you find it beneficial. So here's our database table. For those of you that haven't stuck around and are just now joining us, Here's what we got. Uh, here are all the different columns, and let's just look at the data so far. These are all the different users that we've added. And in this video, I wanna talk about updating. And this is probably gonna be a two-parter. The first one's gonna be, let's just update it in the code, because I know some people just wanna learn it real quick and uh, update it in the code. And then for those of you that wanna learn more, I recommend you watching the next video, because we're actually gonna implement it in our web app. But so what I want to do is I want to add a new action to our home controller. It's actually getting pretty packed, but that's okay. And I'm just going to call this, uh, let's see, let's type this first. I can't type and talk at the same time, apparently. So I'm going to call this update user, All right? That makes sense. And I'm going to leave that as it's not going to take in any parameters. That looks fine. And at the very end, Let's just, uh, whoops, let's just return a view. And which view do we want to return? Um, let's just do the add user view. So add users or add user? Uh, add users. Okay, so here's our new action. And basically what I want to do is whenever this action's called or provoked, we just want to update one of these in, uh, in our database table using any framework. How do we do that? First, we need to obtain the record that we want to update, and we need to set that uh, to an object. So in our case, it's gonna be a user model object. And let's just go ahead and put our using statement and say, hey, our database uh, variable is going to be a new demo context, because that's the context we set up in the first video. And now we can go ahead and grab the record that we want to update. So in my mind, the best way to do this is using the private key because no matter what, that's the one that's going to be unique. So maybe I want to update the first one. Uh, who doesn't have an age? So that's, that's a good example. So let's grab the first one with ID one and then we're going to update the age. So let's say var user, which is going to just be of type user model is going to be equal to db.users. And then we're gonna do something similar to how we, uh, how we, what did we do? Searched, yeah. How we search where we have the where clause. And I'm going to say where, and then lambda expression, user u, uh, u.id is equal to one. So something else I wanna add at the very end is just first or default. And that's just going to make sure that we only return one, but based on our where clause, this should only return one, right? Because we're searching or we're filtering with the where clause to just grab where ID is equal to one. So now if we try user.age, uh, we can set it equal to something. So this is where the update comes into play. We have our user object that we used uh, entity framework to query for it and give us the first one that comes with this where clause. Uh, and now we can go ahead and set this user object's age to something. And let's just say we wanna put its age at 18. Okay. And now it's just really simple, DV, db, not db, dot save changes. Just like that. 
So we change the age, then we save the changes, and let's go ahead and make sure that this works. So I'm gonna put a breakpoint right here. So when we're running through this, I wanna make sure everything checks out. So let's go ahead and run this. Okay. And let's go to add users. And then what we need to change is just the action. So instead of add users, we're going to do update user. Here we go, our breakpoint is invoked and we can skip this just by hitting F11 to go to the next line. Hit it again, uh, so it's not gonna be anything yet. So if we go another line, there we go. And we hover over this, let's go ahead and see if everything checks out. Yeah, test gmail.com, Joe, jdo21, let's make sure. Test Joe, jdo21, and ID was of one, right? I wanna make sure, ID was one. Yeah, so now we change user.age is equal to 18. Let's go to the next line, let's hover over again, just see. Yep, set to 18, so it should save. And it's saved, let's go ahead and refresh. There we go. It just updated our database uh, table users with the new value that we gave it. That is how simple it is to update with any framework core. And in the next video, I'm going to, if we go back and look at our web app, I'm going to have a separate page. Well, actually, I'm not gonna have a separate page. Let's load these back up. I wanna have a button on each row here, and it's gonna say update. And if I press this row, it's going to send us to a new view with all of the information in a form, kind of like this, and we can update it, different parts, uh, and then hit submit and then it'll save the changes. So that's all I got for this one, guys. Um, stick around for the next video. Hopefully you watch that because if you really want to learn, it's uh, it should definitely help you, I think. So thanks for watching. Hopefully see you in the next one and take care.